I think I like that better. So, what we got here is a piece of obsidian. See, it's got a concavity here. It's convex on that side. It has a really good place. Strike a few flakes off that plane right there to go that way. Um, I'm not going to start off right off the bat with the indirect percussion. I'm going to use a hammer stone to kind of get some short flakes and get ready to take some bigger ones. So, and kind of shape it. It's a good idea to have a hammer stone or two around. It, um, they work really well. They're not super aggressive like copper for this. And you could do this with a copper bopper, but if you drive long flakes into that concavity, you're going to have troubles. So, right there, I just kind of took some short flakes into that concavity and stiffened up the edge. Uh, and get a couple flakes off the bottom here to get ready to start working that other edge. And we'll turn the edge with the hammer stone. And you can do it with the indirect cusser. It's just it's all about preference. And I probably will switch to it here in a second. It's so much easier to flake off a square edge with that indirect cusser. Okay. There it is. We're going indirect. Okay. And you can see right there. See how we started to work into that edge? I'm just going to flip and alternate flake off until we have a nice edge to work with here. And a lot of times, especially when I'm using these uh, more brittle and I guess the word is softer materials like obsidian. I'll only use I'll only grind with a hammer stone and not with a carburetum abrader because you'll make the platform so stiff you're you're going to overshoot it or, or you have to use so much force to get the flake to release that uh, you'll overshoot it or you'll break the piece. All right, so here's where we're at now. We're going to alternate flake off this square edge at the base. This little ash pocket. Okay, now this is what I've been working on. Is a set of these for some hunting arrows. I'm using this one as a template. I can get awful close with that piece, so I think I'm gonna carry on with that piece and try to get a triangular preform. So I'm gonna take my hammer stone. Now length is a problem for me on this piece, so I don't want to hit the bottom or the top, but I'll just make it shorter. But I've got a lot of width to work with, so I'm gonna take my hammer stone and kind of brush downwards. Uh, at this stage in the game, it doesn't matter. Flakes have got to come off of both sides on this piece. I'm going to brush downwards into that concavity again. Just lightly. So you don't get any hinges. I think I'm going to scrunch that bit off there. That's another thing the hammerstone is useful for. Okay, now our edges are ready, take some thinning flakes. Stay below center line, and use the random platforms. They'll zigzag since you zigzag that corner off there. 
and just take you take advantage of the platforms that are available to you to use. Okay. Sometimes you have to take a flake from the base. Sometimes that's the only way to get the thickness off where you need it off. That's what the platform looks like. I don't like the lighting is is not good. Going this way. I've taken out most of that concavity. But where the concavity still is, we're just going to hit kind of high on the platform with short popping flakes just so we don't get them to run far in there they'll hinge like that one tried to. And once you get past the concavity to where there's a little meat, you can uh, go ahead and take your long flakes. Okay. So we're a little heavy towards the tip. We'll get a couple flakes across there. Clean that up a little. And we're ready to work towards the other back side now. So we're going to take... Oh, we're not going to drop it in the bucket. Take our hammer stone. I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay, this one's already low. It's already set up to take one across that tip. So I'm going to just brush it a little. Get it ready. Okay. See that little platform there? We're going to go that way. The good thing about an edge is that it is a ready-made ridge. So we're going to try and take some of that mass off right there. Okay, we overshot, but that's okay. I should have saved that flake to show you. I think it's long gone now. Yeah. All right, we're going to work that top edge back. We've got another platform there. There. You see the mass there? We're going to get that one. That one is probably going to overshoot as well. Which is okay. No, it didn't. Move down and get another one. Right beside it. There we go. Now we're getting that tip where we want it. Okay, we're going to clean that flake or two here. Brush. We're going back towards the side we didn't work. I'm going to take one right here onto that face. You got to be careful hitting them near the ends because you'll end snap, especially obsidian. It'll end snap for no good reason. It'll end snap just because you looked at it funny. Okay, and some short flakes. Okay, and we'll stiffen the edge on the other side now. Bring it back towards the side we haven't mapped. So I'll brush down away from it. Short flakes. We don't, we're not looking to go crazy, especially with this being obsidian. Obsidian is three quarters of the way broke when it comes out of the ground, you know. It's just difficult. And there we have it. That is a triangular preform. It's a little rough, but it's ready. Okay. So I'll set it aside. I have a. I'll get it for the next video because I'm going to make several of these. I have a coffee tin that I keep my obsidian and glass preforms in. So it will go in the tin. And then when I, I'm in the mood to finish her up and put the touches on it and notch, I'll typically sit down and notch three or four points. You know, it's just depends on what kind of a mood you're in. 
Sometimes you're in a mood just to whack and bash. <laughs> you don't want to try to notch when you're in that kind of mood. I don't know how many of you guys are flint nappers, but the ones that are, I'm sure will know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you.